the thaw came earlier this year than expected. After it had rained for several days, the trail base had fallen through in several places, making travel in the bush difficult. Just two days prior, I had tried unsuccessfully to reach the cabin on my snowmobile. After bogging the sled down in two separate slush pits, I was forced to turn back once again. I love this old Jag, but I just might have to consider an upgrade for next winter. Anyway, once the trail had a chance to partially reharden, my dad and I returned to make another run. This time, we made it. Our first stop was at the pop-up cabin, where we dropped our overnight gear before continuing on to the main cabin. Hey everyone, uh, what we'll be doing today is prepping uh, the log cabin for the application of chinking in the summertime. And it starts with this diamond mesh lath. These strips of lath, which we nailed between the log horses, is the framework that the mortar will eventually be applied to. 
the mortar will bond with the lathe, which will strengthen it considerably. I'd like to thank Native for sponsoring this episode. Did you know that many conventional deodorants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands to keep you from sweating? Native's classic deodorant is vegan and cruelty-free, free of aluminum, parabens, and sulfates, using ingredients you can understand, like coconut oil and shea butter. It's important to take care of yourself with the best ingredients. That's why I've started using Native, a personal care brand that creates hygiene products that are better for the body. I've started off with Native's Build Your Own Deodorant Pack. It's easy. You just pick three of your favorite bars. I chose citrus and herbal musk, cucumber and mint, and charcoal. What I enjoy most about Native products is that they are made from healthy ingredients, and that they last, even when I'm working hard. They've got products for the whole family, including teens deodorant, toothpaste, body wash, and soap, and they're delivered straight to your door with free shipping. Save 33% on your first Native deodorant pack, plus free shipping when you click on the link in my description box and use code OUTSIDER20. Just follow the link and start feeling and smelling fresh today with Native. Well, now that I've taken some time to explain what my dad and I will be doing for the chinking in this cabin, uh, I might as well answer some questions that I've been receiving lately. Uh, one of the top questions I've received is about how many cameras I've broken while filming on YouTube. And if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I have a reputation for being very rough on my cameras. Uh, and that's because I like to have my cameras close into the action, uh, which means that they're always close to trees falling and my tractor driving, my snowmobile and all the other stuff. And so they've been beat up quite a bit. And so I'm going to roll a montage right now. And as you're watching it, I want you to guess how many cameras I've gone through uh, over my seven years of being here on YouTube. And once that montage is finished, I will tell you how many I've broken. Oh, he's not. <laughs> Whoa. Did you hit something? Yeah, I ran into a tree. Okay, so this is how many cameras I've broken over seven years of recording with them on YouTube. And the grand total is just one. I'm serious, I, I've broken only one. Uh, and that's because for the close-up action shots that I do, uh, I use a GoPro camera. And this is not a sponsorship, but I'm just saying that uh, the GoPro is, is a tough camera. It's made to take impacts, it's made to go underwater, uh, which is perfect for the work that I do. And so that's why I'm able to get these really close up, uh, these really rough shots, uh, because the GoPro can take the punishment. Uh, and I also am very careful in how I place the camera so it doesn't take uh, too heavy of a hit. Um, for example, if I'm felling a tree uh, on top of the camera, I try to make sure that uh, there isn't going to be a major branch that hits it, or I try to just have the tree avoid it altogether while still falling very close to the camera. Uh, so I am very intentional with how I uh, record with my GoPros and, and where I place them. And so actually I've broken zero GoPro cameras. Uh, I have, I've got two GoPros and I still have them. I mean, they haven't been broken at all. They're st I'm still using them. So the camera that I've actually broken uh, is my drone. And technically that wasn't even my fault. Uh, long story short, uh, these, uh, I have the Mavic Pro, which is made by DJI and uh, it has a special return to home feature so if it uh, if it loses connection with my controller it will automatically uh, fly up into the sky and return to where it took off from and land there safely 
Uh, and this has been very helpful because uh, there's been several times where I've had the drone several kilometers away in the bush and I've lost signal and uh, thank goodness the drone uh, then uh, returned home and landed right back where I took, uh, took off with it. Uh, so that's been a good thing. But there was one time in particular that I was just taking off with the drone and I was uh, under some tree cover and for some reason uh, I lost signal with the drone. And so the drone went into return home mode which meant that it rose up into the sky so that it could start to, to fly itself back, uh, which was only like 30 feet away. Um, but as it was flying up into the air, there was an overhanging maple tree that it actually ran into. And uh, so it broke the propellers um, and then it fell to the ground and it broke uh, the camera gimbal and uh, the arms as well. Uh, which was uh, a sad day for me because uh, drones aren't cheap. But I sent it in, I got it repaired and uh, it was sent back to me and I'm still flying with it today. Uh, so as far as cameras that I've broken, uh, I've only broken just the one. So anyway, I'm going to get back to work here and uh, getting some more lath up between the log horses. Actually, I realized in editing that I had in fact broken one other camera during the early years of this channel. So I guess that makes two cameras. I'd feel guilty if I didn't mention it, so I'm glad I got it off my chest. Anyway, back to the episode. After doing what we could on the log cabin, we packed up and headed back to the pop-up cabin to grab some supper and a good night's sleep. stir-fry noodles for supper, and candied bacon for dessert, made from the maple syrup that I harvested last year.
Even with the stove damper closed and the fire kept low, the cabin remained at a toasty 25 to 30 degrees Celsius for the night. As I lay there in my bunk, I listened to the gentle popping of warm fire in the stove below to the steady crackle of freezing rain above and the occasional lick of wind against the tarp. I listened and I was lulled into a deep and restful sleep. With the thaw now upon us, this would be the very last night we'd get to spend at our little winter outpost, in this location at least. Upon our return, we will dismantle the pop-up cabin and set it back up in a different location on a more solid footing. Anyway, now that spring is on the way, I'm looking forward to getting back to the main cabin build. More episodes to come. Until then, my friends.